What is going on YouTube? Hayden here. Throughout 2022, we are experiencing some of the craziest economic problems we've ever seen. As if the pandemic and global business shutdown wasn't enough two years ago. Flash forward to today and we're now facing the highest gas prices in history, food shortages, businesses laying off employees, supply chain shortages, a housing bubble, and let's not forget about record high inflation mixed with a crashing stock market and crypto market. But within all this chaos lies yet again one of the biggest wealth opportunities our generation has seen. So let's not waste any more time make sure to subscribe and let's dive into today's video believe it or not the pandemic had caused one of the fastest economic recoveries we've seen in years the u.s economy grew by 5.7 percent in 2021 the fastest gain since 1984 not only that our gdp managed to grow by 6.9 percent in three months in the last quarter of 2021 creating one of the strongest consumer demand markets we've ever seen unfortunately this came at a cost such a strong growth recovery mixed with extremely high consumer demand helped fuel some of the highest inflation rates our country has seen in 40 years. See, the thing is inflation is determined by the interaction of total demand and total supply in the economy. Now, if the total spending in the economy exceeds the total amount that the economy can produce, then production cannot increase, but instead prices will rise instead. Now, when you have a higher demand, the prices tend to go up. And when you have lower supply, the prices tend to also go up. And unfortunately, we have both. Now, we broke the supply chain when people were forced to quarantine and when businesses were forced to close. At the same time, we broke our consumer demand when the feds handed out billions of dollars worth of stimulus. Now, this created a feeling that people had extra money to spend to make up for the year that the government had shut us down. Now, this is why we're seeing things like used cars explode in price, new cars can't be made because of the chip shortages from factories being shut down due to the pandemic. This further drives the price up for used cars. Crazy enough, the average price of a used car rose in every month from February to November of 2021. In comparison, the average Average cost for a used car in 2016 was just $18,600. Now, KBB said its average used car listing price in November of 2021 was $27,500, an increase of 27% from 2020 and a massive increase from 2016. Now, you know what else is being affected by the supply chain shortage? The like button. So guys, make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This way, YouTube and I both know that you guys want to see more videos like this, and it can reach more people that want to see more content like this. Now, Besides the like button, real estate has also been affected by the supply chain shortage. The median price of homes nationwide hit a record high in February this year of $392,000, making it extremely hard for millennials and people trying to move out of their parents' house to buy a new home. Meanwhile, housing supply remains tight, and the number of homes for sale on any given day in February of this year is 24.5% lower than last year. Now, we've actually managed to create such a demand for housing due to the pandemic that it's causing dozens of people to form lines down the block at open houses and create bidding wars on homes. This is causing houses to sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking, which is absolutely insane. Now, there's also a huge shortage of new homes being built because of delays in construction in search for lumber and workers. Now, lumber prices hit an all-time high in May of 2021, an increase of 406% from prices one year prior in 2020. And as a result, the price of a new single-family home has increased by nearly $36,000. Houses weren't the only thing affected by the lumber shortage. We actually saw wood pallets used for transporting products also surge 60%, further adding to the supply chain shortage. The housing bubble also caused a huge demand for rentals since many people can't afford homes, making it very difficult to find houses. It is making it very difficult to find rentals, and it is making it very expensive to actually lease a rental as prices for rent has exploded in price. This is another reason why I actually moved from New York to Florida because of the rate difference differences. Even though Florida is currently surging in prices for rentals because of everybody flocking in, it is still relatively cheaper than living on Long Island. And I get a ton more space for the same price as what I would be paying for almost like a 600 square foot attic in Long Island, which might be like $1,850, $2,000. I can get an 1,100 square foot of brand new apartment in Florida for only 1,800 bucks. Still, there are a few people that have been lucky enough to actually buy homes at top dollar. And the people buying these as rental properties are going to be raising their rents as well because they need to pay off the massive investment and mortgage rate they just took out. Now, rents in the U.S. climbed to a new record high again, and they are expected to keep rising. The national median rent was $1,827 a month in April, up 16.7% from a year ago. Now, rent has also been steadily increasing since early last year, and if recent trends keep continuing, then the report projects that typical rents could be more than $2,000 a month by August. And to make things even worse, while all this is happening, Russia decided to go to war with 
with Ukraine. This is partially why gas prices are surging to record highs. The other reason is due to people being trapped at home, so gas was less needed, and once the economy opened up, demand boomed for gas, and pretty much all the importers of uh, fuel couldn't keep up with the demand. This is also adding to the reason why gas is now costing people $4, $5, and even $6, if not 7 in places like California. Not only is this hurting the everyday employee to drive to work, but it's also hurting businesses on a much bigger scale. The rising cost of fuel, especially diesel, means that anything transported on a truck, train, or ship is affected. And this ultimately means that when fuel prices go up, so does all the prices of everything that they're transporting. But Hayden, what does high inflation and any of this have to do with your title that says the biggest wealth transfer is beginning? Because all I see is the stock market crashing, which doesn't seem like a good opportunity to buy. Well, let me answer that before you decide to actually sell off everything. You see, inflation is through the roof, and the feds need to regain control of our economy and curb the inflation bubble that's happening. Now, surprisingly, though, some economists even believe that we may have already done it. You see, the Federal Reserve seeks to control inflation by influencing interest rates. And when inflation is too high, the Federal Reserve typically raises interest rates to slow the economy and bring inflation down. And when inflation is too low, the Federal Reserve typically lowers interest rates to stimulate economy and move inflation higher. Now, the feds actually managed to raise interest rates so high this year that it's the highest point we've ever raised in over 20 years. Doing this may have actually caused inflation to peak. Now, inflation actually managed to fall from 8.5% in March to 8.3% in April, which means we may be slowing down since this is the first month we've seen a decline. Now, the problem still remains that everything has a chain reaction from doing this. By introducing these rate hikes to our booming economy that we just previously had, it immediately started to crash the crypto and stock market. And this ended one of the fastest economic recoveries the S&P 500 has ever seen. Now, with all the new money printed by the feds and dumped into the economy, a ton of it went into the stock market as well as cryptocurrency, overinflating the price of both, only fueling the bear market's potential to the downside. Here's the thing, since 1950, the S&P 500 has had an average drop of 13.6% within the year, but usually ends the year in a positive. Now, over this 72-year period, there have been 36 double-digit corrections, 10 bear markets, and six crashes. Now, on average, though, the S&P 500 has experienced a correction of 10% or more once every two years, a bear market of 20% or more once every seven years, and a crash of 30% or more once every 12 years. Now, to date, this year, we have currently seen the S&P 500 drop as low as 20%, classifying us as a bear market. And scary enough, some economists are even expecting us to slide down to the 30 to 35% level, but we'll see if that actually happens. So just be prepared. Now, remember, guys, the bear market that we're currently experiencing happens once every seven years. Now, this alone creates a huge opportunity to take advantage of one of the biggest transfers of wealth that we won't see again for a long time, maybe seven years, maybe even 12 years from now. Even Warren Buffett agrees that the stock market is a device for transferring money from people that are impatient to people that are patient. Now, the greatest wealth transfer in history has actually just started. Now, we will soon see older Americans that stockpile the record $35 trillion just give it away. And baby boomers and even older Americans have spent pretty much decades accumulating an enormous stockpile of wealth. And at the end of 2021, Americans aged 70 and above had a net worth of nearly $35 trillion, according to Federal Reserve data. Now, this this actually amounts to 27% of all US wealth, up from 20% three decades ago. Now, older generations will hand down some $70 trillion between 2018 and 2042, and we've already seen about four years of this so far. Now, of that, roughly $61 trillion will be given to the next of kin, also known as millennials and Gen Xers. And you guessed it, a lot of this money has already started to be dumped into the stock market, cryptocurrency, uh, the housing market, and even uh, startup businesses and, and small businesses. So here's the thing you guys have to remember. Whether you're actually receiving money as inheritance or you're not receiving money as inheritance, if you want to be a part of this wealth transfer and actually get rich, what you do with your time and what you do with your money will determine your success in the future. This means that if you want an edge in the market, you need to be patient and don't sell because of fear. Let others do that for you. Learn which investments are undervalued and will be around for the long term and buy those at a good price. Scary enough, 
most people who receive large sums of money end up going, you know, broke. Now, it's common to see this in major league sports players, uh, lottery winners, and even people that receive large inheritances. And this usually happens often because some people are not financially educated. Selling out due to fear is a great example. Now, the people that will gain from this wealth transfer are the people that know how to get rich. And that's why most millionaires are created from bear markets and recessions. And I know this sounds like too good to be true, but even during the Great Depression, when one third of Americans were financially financially devastated, more millionaires were created at that specific point in time than any other time in American history. And this holds true now. We will see one third of Americans get hit hard by the pandemic and potentially this possible recession. And we will also see one third maintain their lifestyle, but it will be increasingly difficult to do so. And lastly, we'll see one third of Americans get much, much, much richer. Now, a new Magnify Money survey found that some investors are going against the experts. Due to the current events over the past year, nearly 40% of investors say they have pulled money from the stock market, with many regretting their knee-jerk reaction. The survey found that younger investors are more likely to pull out their money from the stock market, and this makes sense because most new investors haven't experienced the bulls and bears and the swings in the market like the older generations have. They've seen that 67% of Gen Z investors and 57% of millennial investors happen to pull out of the market. Now, of those that pulled out, approximately 45% of those millennials investors wish they had it, along with 39% of Gen Z investors also wishing they had it. Remember guys, making money is one thing, keeping it is an entirely different ball game. An important saying from Dave Ramsey is always invest in things you understand. Now this holds true to the stock market and any aspect of investing. Educated investors know that the stock market is guaranteed to decline and they know not to sell at a loss. In 1972, the stock market fell 48% and recovered 125%. In 1980, the stock market fell 27%, but recovered covered 228%. In 1988, the stock market fell 33% and recovered 582%. And even in 2000, the stock market fell 49% and recovered 101. And in 2008, we fell 56% and recovered 400%. So let this educate you to not be fearful of dips and look at them as buying opportunities. As it's times like this that offer the best entry into the stock market. And for those that are already invested, it's times like this that let you secure incredible discounts. So guys, that brings us to the end of today's video. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe, and drop a comment if you have something to say. Otherwise, I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.